Hello beautiful beloved twin flames. I'm just recording this uh, recording as I walk along the beach, um, breathing in the beautiful positive uh, or actually negative ions that are coming off the sea and uh, just the fresh feeling of being in nature. So I hope you can also receive this lovely energy of being by the water and breathing in the fresh sea air. So continuing on uh, with my theories around uh, physics and blending the science and the spirituality together to understand more of our experience. So I have been guided to talk about the really strong relationship between emotions, energy in motion, <laughs> and uh, the laws of physics and science and try to relate those and, and fit those pieces together so we can see and feel how they work uh, within our own selves. So there's a couple of experiments that are quite useful to explain this and uh, so I'm going to try and again find some pictures to put up with this recording as well. So one of the really famous experiments was done by a Japanese scientist and his name will appear there. Sorry I can't remember it right now while I'm walking along the beach. Um, <laughs> but he did this experiment with water where he uh, put lots of different water uh, um, samples in containers and put labels on each of the containers uh, saying different messages and the different messages were some were love and some were hate and um, like ugly or and then some positive things like peace and then he studied the molecules of the water and watched how they changed according to the message that was on the jar and these molecules that were had the, the negative messages of hate and um, despair or death or whatever, um, evil I think was another one of them, uh, changed into this kind of gloopy substance that looked really kind of horrible and you can see the pictures I think if I, if I, can, if I can find some I'll put them beside this video and then uh, the love and the peace, all the molecules kind of went to these beautiful kind of snowflake-like uh, patterns and they created these beautiful lovely patterns. So this is one scientific experiment that shows the relationship between what messages we tell the atoms to, you know, because obviously again everything's made up of atoms, everything's energy, what's the, the message that we tell the atoms as to how they formulate themselves. So another connection between energy or vibration and matter that's been shown um, in science is the sound experiments with um, magnetics um, showing on a plate. And again, I will either put a link to some videos below to show you more about that or um, just even put up a picture here to show you. Um, I think some of the, the machinery they've used is kind of frequency kind of measuring machinery or uh, in the old days they were known as tonoscopes so there's just metal plates with sand on them and um, playing certain frequencies that the sand arranges itself into uh, patterns according to the frequency of the sound so there's all these different patterns that are formulated according to sound so Again, imagine what's happening with our body when we hear different frequencies and sounds. So this explains uh, that aspect of it as well. There's also a great uh, experiment that was done uh, in science known as the Sh um, and it came out known as the Schumann resonance resonance, sorry. so uh, that it, that was uh, basically around uh, again the frequencies that come off uh, from Earth, like when people are apparently close to nature. Actually, sorry, let's go back a little bit and say that, that nature or the Earth gives off a certain Hertz level of energy that's the, the magnetic or electromagnetic field of resonance that can actually be measured. And that's a certain number, which I'm sorry, I can't remember while I'm walking on the beach, but it will be there somewhere in the information. And apparently the further away we get from nature, let's just say we put concrete between ourselves and the earth or we live in buildings and cities where there's massive amounts of 
um, man-made structures. We get further and further away from trees and plants and nature and then at the, the, the hertz level of the human body um, changes and becomes yeah it can make people sick they actually did experiments with people and put them in situations where they were totally separated from the the energies or the resonances electromagnetic fields of earth and nature and they became really sick and so again explaining our energies and how they're affected by our circumstances what we're telling ourselves our environments it's all related so uh, yeah, so this is kind of part two, I guess, of some of the information that's out there in the scientific world that we can relate back to our own selves and with our and and how it affects our emotions and which therefore is energy in motion and how that affects our physical matter and our bodies. Uh, so yeah, so again, I always like to use those examples uh, when working with people to explain. If we're constantly telling ourselves that, you know, we're not good enough or we just, uh, you know, I, I've spent a lot of my life, I'm going to use myself as an example, to be really authentic, um, that just really not feeling good enough, uh, feeling overweight and ugly and so, you know, telling myself that I'm fat and ugly, for example, is, what what is that, rep you know, how's that affecting my cells? And, you know, there's also a lot of explanations metaphysically for a lot of illnesses. So, again, these illnesses start out in our energy fields, and our emotional fields, which come from thoughts, so the, whatever thoughts we're saying about ourselves. Um, you'll find, you know, Louise Hayes done a lot of this work, where, and I was reading up on this the other night, so it can also explain, for example, like if you're having, let's just say, hip pain, um, quite common amongst women. Um, if you look that up and see, there's lots of reasons why we can have pain in that area. It's relating to a thought that creates an emotion that eventually, uh, if it's been said for a, a long period of time or that, that belief system has become so uh, dominant in our energy field, that it eventually makes its way into matter and becomes a physical illness. So again, this, this quantum physics explanation for illnesses is it's all there it's quite obvious so yeah so this is what it's all about at the moment with bridging again that world between spirituality or and science and actually having explanations for what's going on and really understanding our bodies more and our thoughts and emotions and how they are affecting our journey so with the twin flame journey just relating it back to us um, you know, a lot of this energy work, a lot of many of you have been doing for a long, long time. It's just, again, taking it to that next level. And uh, some of us have, have done so much work. Uh, what I'm noticing more and more uh, is that the, the, the energy fields of others, getting used to managing when other people's energy fields aren't in resonance and what that, how that can affect us, whether we are... Uh, holding our vibration steady, holding our emotions steady in a situation that may not necessarily be steady. Um, do we let ourselves again be affected by the the dominant energies or the magnetics again where we talked about in Twin Flame Physics 111? <laughs> so do we let that dominant energy overtake us or can we sort of move away and if we're being repelled by a certain energy and separate ourselves to become strong again in our own energy fields so yeah all of good stuff to think about I'm going to leave it there I want to keep these videos short um, and sweet and just you know provide little bits of information so it doesn't get overwhelming and send you out lots of beautiful twin flame positive love and energy for your day love you okay bye